as you can see this is actually installed on my own system here but it will look the same no matter where you are logged into this is a fresh installation so I'm going to use the default credentials to log in okay the game we're going to use today is just a very simple one just to show a regular installation I'm not going to use Mechanical Turk I'm not going to use captive players, this is going to be very straightforward. I'm not going to show people playing the game, I'm just going to set it up. What we see when we log into the experimenter view is essentially three panels, and those configure everything we might want to know about the experiment. In the upper left-hand corner, if we drop down the hamburger or navigation icon there, we can also set parts of the experiment that relate to us, the administrator. You really should set all of these but we're not going to set any of them today because it takes too long. So just pretend I've set them. Once you do set any one of these, it will have a little check mark next to it. So let's start with the experiment games. What you name your game is irrelevant because nobody's going to see it but us. So let's just call it test game. In terms of the game payoffs themselves, it's going to be entered as if we were reading off the payoffs from the top left to the bottom right. So you can imagine a matrix laid out from top left to bottom right with each payoff being listed in order. So for example, if I were to do 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, then the payoff to the row player playing the first row and the column player playing the second column would be 2. Let's do the simplest thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now it shows up right here, and we can see our game. We can enter as many games as we want. Uh, you can also enter negatively valued games, although that changes the lottery a little bit. If we move down to the experiment participants, this really depends upon how you want to set up your experiment. What we'll do for this one, earlier I said we wouldn't do captive, but it's actually easier. A captive participant is simply somebody who goes to the experiment as you have listed it up here, of course without the admin home, it will tell you actually. So if we allow captive participants, it will give us the link that they can use to sign on. A captive participant is just simply one who goes to a link, enters their identifier, email address, whatever, and is allowed to play the game. So they're not set beforehand. This is really nice for just an experiment you want to set up in your classroom, for instance, right on the spot. Email participants are nicer if you want to structure exactly who is out to play. And of course Mechanical Turk, which is an Amazon service we won't get into now. Allow captive experiments is what's going to obviously allow that. Preserve modes after startup means the following. So once I click this and submit it, people are allowed to start logging into play. And we would actually see them. We would actually see them right here where it says no participants. So if I were to reload the page right now and people had already gone to that page and logged in, you would see them right here. And there would be the ability to deny them entry or, or whatever you want. Um, preserve modes after startup means that once you start the game, in general, captive participants will no longer be allowed to play. And the reason I do that is because sometimes if you're in a classroom, you can see who has logged in. You can say, okay, I have eight players here. I know all of you, and that's it. And then once you start the game, it's limited to those eight players. It's somewhat of a security mechanism. If we were to continue letting people join, they might be able to join after the experiment has started for rounds that are later on. And often this is something you want to do if you're running a very long-running game, like several hundred rounds in a conference, for example, where people are allowed to join, play and leave as they wish. We'll keep it simple. This is the main configuration right here. This actually specifies the nitty-gritty of the game itself. The things that it shows by default are the bare minimum that the system needs. When the experiment begins is very important. So if I do start in one minute, that means that this is of course in GMT, in one minute the game, the experiment rather, is going to start. This will tell us here how many rounds the game runs in. Uh, this right here tells us the number of minutes per round. 
And then this says that if a certain percentage of people have played, then the round will automatically roll. This is really useful, actually. And this is why I peg it at 100%, in that I say, if you have a round that, for example, would run by default for one hour, and everybody plays within the first five minutes, you probably don't want them to wait an entire hour for the next round. Why would they? So this allows you to play very quickly. So this is a very easy default configuration. If you're in your classroom sitting there and you want to invite people to play, this is a very nice default setup. You enter your games, you say you want captive participants, and once you enable that, people can already go to this address right here and begin to log into play. You say you want to start in one minute or five, whatever you want, the number of rounds. Um, if you know that everybody is going to play, then probably if you can just set this to anything and then once everybody plays the round will roll but maybe you want to do something like five minutes and then to roll if 75 percent of people have played it's really up to you the advanced options tab is going to show us a lot of things now the default way to reward people at the end of the experiment is lottery and basically the lottery is run where the payoffs, meaning the, uh, the uh, accumulated payoffs when you play against the average of all other people, is transformed linearly into a number of tickets. So if you have a payoff of 40, then you would get 40 tickets. The system at that point will add up all of those tickets over all the players, and then essentially uh, say, okay, so the first person has 40, second player has 80, third player has 20, etc., and it will then draw a random number between that, which is the lottery ticket that's winning, say it's 39, and that of course falls into the first player's purview, so they will win the lottery. You probably don't want a lottery for, this is about a, a thousand euro, sorry, yeah, a thousand euro, you probably don't want a lottery for this particular one, so let's take that off, and we'll also say that there's no lottery in the default instructions that people are shown. These are explained here, but we won't go into them now. We're not going to go into this as well. And all of this we're also not going to go into. Um, we'll do that in later tutorials. The questionnaire is something that shows up at the beginning to cue your people. If you're doing a classroom for game theory, you probably don't need this, though. So, again, going over the simplest possible example is, as mentioned, let's set this back to 100%. We're going to start playing in a minute. And if this time has already passed, the experiment will begin immediately. So we don't need to change this again. We're going to have no lottery. So also we don't want to specify a lottery amount. We're not going to change anything else here. And that's it. So then all we need to do is press Start Experiment. So now we are shown the view for what happens when people are actually playing. As you can see, it's not that interesting right now because it's just me here and nobody's playing. But what we are told by the view right here is first how we configure the game to play. We then know what round we are on. We're on the first round, obviously. And we're also shown the status of what's going on, how many people have played. So let's say we have 20 participants. This will show you as the row players play and as the column players play. We can also do some things here. Um, generally, you won't want to touch this. However, you might. So first, you have to say that you're prepared to do anything. If you don't, it won't let you actually click these buttons, which is helpful. So the most significant one is to back up the experiment. This is useful if you actually want to analyze your data. Um, and of course, you want to do that. The manual online will tell you more about actually analyzing the data, but essentially it's just an SQLite database, very standard. Assuming that you have entered your email address in here, in the email page, it will be emailed to you. So if we go back to the status, and we were to click a backup experiment right now, the entire database would be taken, uh, passwords and so on would be redacted, and it would be mailed to you. Another thing that I often do is to actually reset the game. So let's say we've actually played through our experiment, we've backed it up, we've sent, to our, sent it to ourselves. We can then reset the game. 
So that takes the entire experiment and zeroes it and allows us to start new. It does keep the games we've already played. We can manually remove them. And it also keeps players whom we've added by email. Because usually when you do this, you want to play a different game or run a different experiment. Um, again, the manual will tell you what is actually being wiped from the database. The last thing to do is to advance the round manually. And this actually does happen sometimes. For example, let's say you're playing with Mechanical Turk and, or, or in a conference, and you have people who are constantly joining the game. And at the end of it, you have another 40 rounds left, for example, but the conference has ended. You might click Advanced to Last, just jump to the very end, and that allows you then to close up the experiment, back it up, and so on. Well, that's it. We've now started our game. We're shown uh, at the top here how many minutes to the next round of the experiment. This will automatically update. And again, we can uh, change all of these things up here. We're shown our participants. We don't have any because it's just me. And that's it.